Today's session will be more about like uh, growing business in WordPress. Those are the companies I found and I'm running. Uh, some of the companies that I invested. Uh, I actually started very early. I started when uh, I was in university. Uh, before actually go to my university, I started my company. So uh, in past 14 years, uh, I worked very closely with WordPress. At the same time, I uh, run a lot of different brands. And uh, today's session, like I'm going to talk about WordPress business. Uh, at the same time, like uh, uh, le let's see, like how many of you are already in WordPress business? So you are building something for WordPress, or like maybe you are uh, working for a client. How many of you are already in business? Okay. Okay. So uh, uh, as I'm going to talk about like how <coughs> to grow a business in WordPress, uh, I could uh, go into a little more deep. Uh, like uh, how uh, a lot of like big things works. I also, I want to start with very basic. So uh, any people who are maybe just developing in WordPress but uh, not considering a business or something, we could share the details like how to grow more in WordPress business. Uh, I have been to many WordCamps. Uh, I have been to like over 100 WordCamps already, and those are the some of the WordCamps that I attended or spoken. And uh, yes, uh, I have recently retired. Uh, this year, uh, in the September past, was actually my 34th birthday. And uh, that was actually a Hero Press article. Uh, okay, we will uh, ask interactive questions. So whoever raised hand, they will get a, like, uh, uh, probably some swag. So how many of you have known about Hero Press? Okay, there's uh, somebody that knows Hero Press. So that, so uh, HeroPress is, is a like collective uh, uh, publication where people actually write uh, their interesting stories about WordPress. So I published uh, my HeroPress article uh, back in 2017 uh, that uh, sharing my plan, like how I want to retire by the age 34 and why I want to even retire. So uh, if you like, uh, you would read the article, that's extremely long article. So uh, you have read already, okay. So that's almost like 10,000 word uh, article. Uh, I will share a short link uh, about like wh why I thought about free tag and how WordPress helped me to actually decide that kind of, uh, uh, I would say, like very drastic decision to retire in the middle of my career. So today, we are going to talk about WordPress business. Uh, so as you have already answered, uh, in WordPress business we are mainly uh, concentrating on like product business. So either like plugin or like thing. And uh, we are going to, we are not going to actually talk much about service business. So if you are actually building for your clients, uh, in today's session we are going to focus more on product. Uh, so. As you have answered, like uh, many of you already actually started uh, start uh, WordPress business already. So, wh what did you have learned? Like, uh, was it easy? So, uh, please, uh, some of you, like, if you could answer, like, uh, who do you consider? Uh, like, any of you consider yourself like uh, you are uh, successful in WordPress business? Okay, you, you consider yourself. Uh, are you in plugin business or thing? Uh, any of you are doing in uh, plugin business? Okay. Okay. So uh, hopefully, like in today's session, I will be able to add some of the information that we are doing for our own business, and maybe you could, you could relate to it. So those of you who are actually just getting introduced to WordPress or uh, don't have like much of the idea how WordPress works, uh, WordPress is pretty large. Uh, I think like a few months ago, we have crossed like 33% of our uh, entire uh, web dominance. So right now, uh, almost like over 33% uh, of the entire web is actually built in WordPress. And uh, uh, WooCommerce is very big. Uh, a lot of you already know. Uh, if you consider like uh, e-commerce business, only WooCommerce powers 39% of the entire uh, e-commerce. So and. Uh, Obviously, WooCommerce is also an open source platform. And if you, uh, there's some data uh, taken from Build It uh, that, that gives a lot of data, like how websites are built with which tools. 
and it saves over 1.5 million e-commerce websites are built using WooCommerce. So what is this pretty big? And if you look at the, our uh, plugin growth, uh, that is some stat, like uh, how many plugins are submitted in .org uh, year by year. You see like every year, it, it always green. So if in uh, 2014, uh, if you had like 1.42 uh, uh, 42 new plugin, it actually grew a lot higher in 2014. So this uh, data a little bit like uh, outdated uh, up to like 2015. Uh, but it's, uh, I think like in past few years, it even grew uh, a lot more. So right now we are like gaining more users and more plugins are coming in. And those are the some of the data about Code Canyon. Okay, so how many of you have any plugins or themes in uh, Code Canyon? Okay. So in Code Canyon, uh, they have a review process uh, when uh, you submit a new plugin. So those are the some of the stats, like how their business and number of WordPress plugin is growing. As you can see, like in, in this data is up to 2016, end of 2016. So uh, people are submitting more and more plugins. And everywhere. That means the business is growing. Uh, successful business, like if we uh, today we want to actually talk more about like uh, business, how people start a business and what works and what not in WordPress. Uh, those are like basic steps. Like uh, you probably start as a solo developer. You try to actually build something. Then uh, if you find some growth, you will scale. You expand and. Maybe you will become the market leader. Uh, that's the normal business cycle. Uh, those are the, some of the successful uh, business. There are like hundreds of businesses that are extremely successful in WordPress. Those are some of the biggest names. Uh, I think like most of the people already know Automatic, the company behind WordPress.com, and also WP Rocket, that's a caching plugin, Optin Monster, uh, that lets you uh, like Optin better uh, in Vento, uh, the company behind uh, Code Canyon, Yoast, uh, the ACA plugin, uh, easy digital download, like if you want to uh, sell something online, uh, that's completely digital, that, that could be your choice. And I think it's one of the oldest uh, theme business. Those are the some of the very notable parts inside WordPress ecosystem who are very uh, successful in business. Uh, this is Pippin William. Uh, he's the co-founder of uh, e Easy Digital Download, that is Said Balki. Uh, he's behind uh, Osomotive, that's also the company behind WP Beginner, and uh, Optimonster, that's Corey Miller, the person behind uh, iThemes, and uh, this is Yost, uh, the person behind uh, Yost and ACU Learning. There are business that is actually making over a million dollar per month. So there's a lot of money. But do you think it's easy? Absolutely not. Business is hard. Business is always hard. Then uh, how everything works? Uh, like. Uh, if you're into business, like uh, I'm in business for almost 14, 15 years, the end of it, uh, all the discussion is like business is hard. If business was easy, everybody would be in business. So it's not for everybody and it's not uh, easy, but at the same time, obviously it's possible if you uh, follow the process. So uh, let, let's uh, dig deeper into like business. So uh, in WordPress, we could divide the business in product and service. And today we are going to talk more about product. Uh, service business could be uh, like web design, web customization, customer support, if maybe we are maintaining somebody's website or helping people set it up. Uh, product, uh, in WordPress, we could actually divide the product in uh, two ways, uh, WordPress theme and WordPress plugin. WordPress development, uh, supposed to be a service, but somebody could actually sell it as a like uh, development package as well. So it seems like they, they will probably just actually uh, make some kind of website for you and there's a fixed price and they have a process to build it. So uh, we are going to talk uh, about also the pricing model. Uh, and uh, generally, like in, inside WordPress, uh, I personally prefer uh, the premium model. So you will have a free version that could be a or plugin, and then you will have a like, premium product. So people could actually try it out, and uh, the, the, the main benefit you will get like if you have a like, free product, 
is you, you, you get the, like uh, uh, access to the marketing because uh, if you release your uh, plugin in WordPress.org, you have like easy access to all the uh, millions of users that is actually downloading from the uh, .org. And that uh, also true for the theme as well. Uh, uh, let me share like interesting trend we are seeing right now. Uh, in theme, uh, if you uh, look at uh, the .org theme, a lot of .org theme right now have a premium version that is not a theme. So a theme available in .org, but the premium version is a buy-in. That's the newest trend. So the business trend changing a lot. Like if you look at like uh, WP Astra or Ocean WP, all of them they have a presence in .org, but the premium version is a plugin. So as uh, WordPress right now push a lot about like uh, using customizer and a lot of things uh, need to be like uh, uh, follow the, uh, a lot of standard. So it's easier for them to actually create a like boilerplate kind of theme and like add more functionalities through the plugin. Uh, and uh, a common discussion we uh, had a lot yeah, among like all the WordPress business, like uh, if you should go to SaaS or not to SaaS. Uh, the main benefit you will get if you uh, create a SaaS business is like you could charge your client per month, so it's easier for you to calculate like uh, your lifetime value, your like uh, monthly run rate. And uh, there are a lot of discussions. Uh, if WordPress business goes over uh, like GPL and like in open source if they should actually go for SaaS and if the clients will like to pay or not. So uh, we like to actually talk about those as well. Uh, so let's think about like how a WordPress uh, business generally works. I, I would say like uh, you start uh, to solve a problem, then uh, you have some idea, you build something by your own, you try, uh, try it out in the market, you see like how it start grows. And if uh, stuff works, uh, Working, then you actually execute and you try to uh, grow more. Uh, so the, uh, always it should be start from uh, your intention uh, to solve a problem. Uh, I generally don't see uh, a business that is running for a long time that is started purely to make money. It always has to be like uh, solving a problem. If you look at all the successful businesses in WordPress, the, it's not like they don't have a competitor. They have a strong competitor. The main reason they are still like uh, uh, striving and like they're doing really well is because like they started to solve a problem and that was a unique problem to solve. So let's start with uh, solving a problem, uh, not just to earn money. Uh, it has to have the intention to actually uh, go beyond the money. Money will come in uh, if you're actually doing it uh, for free. And uh, as, as I explained, like uh, releasing it in free, uh, having a it will give you a lot of like more options to actually uh, test the market, uh, release, uh, uh, get more feedback, and like uh, you, you will. Have, it is true that if you release a very good product in free and uh, uh, progressive people from some of the features, uh, people could actually uh, comment and people do a lot of things. But you will get access to uh, millions of people who are uh, already using WordPress. The four benefit of like releasing it in the WordPress.org, you will get a lot of like feedbacks and reviews, and uh, then you could add uh, more value. So instead of like uh, start planning uh, the premium from the beginning, the, I would suggest like build a complete product for free uh, and have more plans. Like if people receive it well, then you will add more uh, values in the premium, and uh, you will always keep building both the free and pro. Uh, uh, let me explain like how it works. Like if you plan a product, uh, thinking about like money and premium version at the beginning, maybe you will speed down some of the premium features in the uh, uh, free one. So when people are getting started, maybe you always thought about like people will pay you money, but you have to realize what is this very large ecosystem. Vast majority of the people is not going to upgrade ever. And so like if you uh, do not give the full benefit of your own product to people. They will not be able to actually use it. So let's build on top of the free version. And uh, as I said, like uh, we have to try to grow our business instead of being able. So we should try to have uh, the free version that is like uh, could be properly used. At the same time, the premium version should add value on top of that instead of like restricting people from a feature. And uh, 
as I say, like uh, let's build uh, on people's feedback. Uh, what kind of uh, like feedback we receive, and also how the ecosystem is actually receiving the product overall. And uh, so, uh, let me give you the, some of the tips, like how a business could be successful, and uh, what are the main tips. So, my first tips will be: uh, you have to have a really good product description. Uh, it, it, it could start from .org description that we in the, in the region file. Then, uh, if you have a landing page in your website, have a, like proper descriptions with like a uh, well elaborated how it works, like how people are using it, and some case study. Uh, if people are really reviewing .org in the free version, add those reviews in here, and uh, show people uh, how your product works in general with some GIF or add video if it doesn't actually uh, make your website very heavy. Uh, and uh, the main reason a lot of WordPress businesses are successful is because uh, of the support. You need to give really good support. And I would insist to give really good support to also your free user. In WordPress.org, each and every product has a like, product forum as well. In that forum, people could ask questions for free, and they are your free user. But when you're building a product, you need to have some strategy how you could actually give support and how you could actually keep providing support ongoing. So some people uh, start building a lot of product, maybe instead of uh, focusing on one product, they build maybe 10 products. And then it will become very hard for them to provide support. You will end up like having bad reviews, you will end up like people talking bad about your product, and it will have really like bad effects uh, when people are searching about your product online. So have a strategy to provide support, and also provide support to your free user as well. Uh, we find out like documentation is something that could actually uh, reduce your pain uh, from the uh, from the growing user base. So if you have good documentation, you will have to actually deal less with the customer support request. So try to build a like very thorough uh, documentation that uh, that so people could actually uh, discover like what kind of issues they are facing and they could solve their own problems. I would also suggest to have a, like a, a FAQ section in your documentation. So the kind of uh, support request you are getting uh, in .org or in your support ticket, the common questions you should be uh, for like publishing in the FAQ. So you do not have to actually uh, deal with those. And I know a lot of people do not want to actually search online or go to your like documentation. They want to actually uh, just uh, come into the chat or like issue a support ticket. So. You answer them politely, and you uh, tell them like uh, the question you answered is already documented in the documentation. So next time you uh, have some questions, go to the documentation first, and then you could always ask us questions. We will always provide support. So that will create a, create a like, good repo, and uh, also like I, I find that a lot of our uh, traffic uh, for our website uh, actually comes from the documentation. So if the documentation is done well, if it's actually elaborated. Uh, you will get like, uh, really good traffic in the documentation as well. Uh, some, some of the mistakes people make, uh, I have seen like documentation and blogging is not the same. So if you have a writer, content writer, that is used to be writing a uh, blog, and you ask them to actually write your documentation, that should be like different approach. So uh, try to uh, dig uh, online to see like how the documentation and uh, normal blog is different, and do it properly. So people will actually find that. Uh, because in documentation, you don't need to sell anything. People are already sold. So in the blog, sometimes we build up the hype. We actually we will have like one or two paragraphs that will actually describe how this is a good post or how he is going to solve. In documentation, people came here to have a solution. So get right into the point and uh, show the solution. And uh, I personally, like, if I had any bit of success in WordPress business, I think that mainly because of content marketing. Uh, I, I was in content from the from very beginning, so uh, how it could help you. So let, let's consider you have built a really good product, and right now in, in 2018, it, it will be very hard for you to find a unique problem that nobody else has solved before. So you probably are building a, a problem that is actually being solved by few other people in a complex way. You are probably making the process is, uh, similar or like easier. Uh, then how you let people know about uh, the good solution. You have already released the plugin in .org, so people could discover, but maybe people are not searching for that. So how do you promote? 
So the promotion, uh, it, it would be a lot of different things in, uh, with the like content blog, you could also use the social media, uh, and I think uh, also in Malaysia the social media is very popular, uh, but uh, the way it works, uh, the way we have seen, is uh, you need to actually focus and have good studies on the content. So you need to produce good content and have a strategy to distribute the content because producing content and distributing content is like uh, uh, they should actually marry each other and they should actually go very well. So if, if you produce good content but you do not have a like distributed vision strategy, that's not going to help. So uh, and I would also suggest to uh, use the uh, lead conversion. So if somebody is coming into your website, have some strategy to get at least their emails so you could communicate back or maybe provide some report or something so you could have their contacts and uh, you could uh, send them updates about your product or maybe if you build a new uh, guideline or something you could always uh, send those back as well. Uh, and uh, I would like to use like modern tools for marketing so instead of like doing all the scheduling or like if you're sharing in social media doing it manually have like modern tools. There are a lot of modern tools available that you could actually uh, utilize. Uh, like uh, like maybe most of your audience are in Twitter, and you are to actually market your product properly in Twitter. So use some tools that actually give you more insight about your Twitter user base, and try to automate some of the process and uh, experiment more. And you need to have like more data. Most of the modern marketing tools will be rely more on big data. And you need to actually uh, like dig deeper and understand your uh, strategy. And if you do not try, uh, you will never know like uh, how uh, you could actually do it better. Uh, let me tell you like uh, interesting uh, example like how I find using data could be like very useful. I run one of the uh, lifestyle magazine in Bangladesh in Bangla language. It called uh, the Dhaka Times. So. Our editor publish uh, one uh, recipe every day. So we thought like maybe publishing a recipe during the uh, like lunch time is a good idea. So we thought like maybe we should publish the recipe in 2:30 because in Bangladesh the general lunch time is 2 p.m. Uh, but like uh, we started doing that. We started sharing uh, those posts in, through our social media in Facebook as well. Uh, we have almost like 2.5 million fans in Facebook. But then we thought about like experimenting. So we tried to do it in different time as well. We, we, start, uh, we started doing like 2.30 uh, or like, uh, also we start, uh, experimented on like 2.30, 1.30 and like 4. Uh, after testing and digging through the data, we find out like people want to actually read the recipe after they have taken the lunch already. Our, our calculation was maybe we should promote uh, the article uh, uh, before the lunch. So maybe people will look at the recipe, they will feel the craving, and they will go to uh, somewhere or ask their wife to actually build, uh, make something. But it's actually other way around. They have already eaten. Now they want to actually look at the food and like it's maybe plan for something tomorrow. So if we have not experimented, we, I would have never thought it. Like people also actually look at the food picture after they had the lunch already. So experiment more, look at the data, maybe you will find something that you have not thought uh, before. Uh, those are the, some of the resources uh, that all the WordPress business people, if you are involved in business, you should actually uh, uh, follow regularly. Uh, that's uh, email. It is, uh, there are a lot of like other uh, product uh, uh, publications as well. They are one of the company that uh, makes few really good WordPress themes and plugins, but they write about their product and write about the WordPress business a lot. Uh, we also have premiums. Uh, they are a kind of a solution if you want to build on WordPress. Is, uh, they will let you publish. Uh, you could actually charge your client. They have a SDK. So you do not have to use any other like e-commerce or something. And they will also let you uh, calculate the tax properly, uh, do the licensing and everything. Uh, and manage.wp, uh, there is uh, like manage.wp.com and manage.wp.org. Manage.wp.com is a like maintenance service, but manage.wp.com is one of the largest news source for WordPress. And uh, WP Weekend is uh, very cool. I, I think uh, most of the people know already uh, because they are uh, running for almost nine years already. So uh, now uh, some of the things like I, I came to understand after running my business for uh, over a decade. Uh, so if your idea is working, if you are already earning some money, uh, people generally uh, try to build a company first. Uh, I would advise you to 
build your team faster. If you have a good team, the company, the culture, the kind of things you want to build, that will come forward already. So instead of like focusing on the company, uh, like looking at the names or brands, try to build a really solid team. That will actually going to help you in the long run. Uh, and uh, business is a continuous process. So if you have, you are having like good sales, if you have like good market share right now, it doesn't mean like you are going to have this forever. It's a continuous process. You always need to actually uh, check the data, see how uh, research more, how you could actually compare yourself with your uh, partners and uh, competitors, and how you could actually uh, really improve. If you do not uh, follow the process, if you do not uh, keep building on top of it, maybe you will not have the success you have right now. So it's a continuous process, and uh, so. Some people uh, try to claim, like, if you build a really good product or plugin or things, if it has a like market size already, maybe uh, you will see back and earn money. Uh, there is actually nothing like you could actually really see back and earn money. You will always have to actually uh, keep working on top of it. Uh, ultimately, uh, plugin business or team business or uh, mostly like anything you look into WordPress is a long game. <coughs> Uh, because like if it takes uh, three months to build a product, maybe it will take like three four months to actually just wrap up the initial version and like get people's feedback and start the premium version. So ultimately, it's a long game. If you think like you could build something in three months and make money out of it, generally it's not going to work. Uh, so you have to have a strategy to have a, like a long plan, keep building on top of it, and. Uh, so right now, uh, I will actually start the time for any questions, and uh, if you have any questions.